All right, Keith Bank account here from the uh, Institute of Mortgage Driven Software Development with the uh, the second half of our uh, demonstration of refactoring. And um, you may recall in the first video, I uh, I refactored a, a simple hello world type method. Uh, I went out of stage where we got a bunch of uh, helper objects that, that get different parts of that string. And uh, where we're going to go from here is we're going to start by introducing a little abstraction. You may notice that all these objects we kind of do the same thing, so uh, we can extract an interface from this. But uh, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to make it all look the same. So let's uh, rename this method so it doesn't just get hello, it uh, gets a string, doesn't it? So it get string. Oh, hang on, I, I used a whole word there. Uh, very important to not use whole words if you can help it. So we just run that. Yeah. Uh, it's looking good so we can extract an interface from this now and let's just well let's just call him getter say what you see or not as the case may be as you can see the tools introduced uh, a handy little comment there that, that adds no value whatsoever um, which is a nice little feature of Eclipse that and um, we repeat the process um, for the other classes that, that, that do the same kind of thing so if we just uh, rename this to like that and then we implement the interface like that implements get her. and then we do it for this one make it public rename the method so it matches yes we are like so and we implement the getter interface. Oh, I uh, made a little mistake there. Right, got to be very, very careful when you're doing the refactoring, yeah? Because, uh, you know, if you break the bill or something like that, it'll be on to you. Right, and on we go. One more to do there. So we make it public. We rename it to match. And then... Easy as peasy, we implement the getter interface. Oops. And then this one here. Rename it to match. And we implement the interface. Right, Kushti. So all we have to do now is we go back to our grid class like so, and we can uh, we can make these all implement getter now because they're all using the same method. So we're, we're halfway there, and all we need to do now is, uh, well, we uh, we probably, rather than just sort of declaring it like here, like this, which is a bit simple, uh, what we probably could do is um, we could probably extract this into its own method, um, which is just uh, create getter, like so, uh, looking all right there. Let me just move this method out of the way. Okay, and um, what we want to do is we want to reuse this method now to create all of them. So we, we, we're we going to make a decision. So I'm going to very, very quickly um, just cut that and I'm going to break the test for a second. Right, which is it's a bit risky, but it's worth it in this case, I think, for the, uh, for the payoff. So we've broken the test now because we returned the wrong getter. So what we need to do is we need to add a switch statement in here and uh, we're going to introduce a magic number, let's call it I for magic and uh, then this now, if I is um, 1 then we uh, we return this fella and if I is 2 
then uh, we return the second fella which is the uh, like that you see and we have a default which just uh, returns now like that so it will ticky beer will compiles and everything um, what's it complained about there oh yeah so we just change the return type there and we add an argument i so now we've got passing the right numbers didn't we so one and two so that was a bit of a leap a bit a bit risky but when we save it it should all run it should all work yeah lovely so all we need to do now is repeat this process uh, so if i say get a free like that um, and all I need to do is add another case statement like that we save that and it all works to boo right and we just we just keep on going like that basically whoops So we add another case statement there. And we save that and JUnitMax tells us we haven't broken nothing. And uh, we do it for the final one there. Lovely. So we got a factory method there, so that, that makes it all a bit more interesting, doesn't it? Um, the only problem with this, of course, is uh, um, really factory methods in the wrong place. We probably need a factory class to put the factory method on because that's, that's kind of how it's done, really. Um, so we get a chance to add another class here. Um, so, and we always grab a chance to have another class. Right, so what I want to do is um, we're going to create a new class, we're going to call this. Well, it's it, it. What does it do? It gets getters. So it's it's a getter getter, isn't it? And um, like that. And we just declare this new class. And then all we have to do now is we have to go back, remove this method across, don't we? So we move this to our getter getter, create getter, which seems reasonable. Okay, like that. So now we've got a getter getter and we create the getter getter and then uh, we use the getter getter to get the getter um, which gets a string which we return in the greeting, uh, passes the test, no one's any the wiser. Of course you could go on from here, there's all sorts of things you could do, you could introduce loads of duplication, create, create a new getter getter every time. Um, you probably get a, uh, a factory for the getter getter as well, for you have multiple types of getter getter. So you'd have a getter getter getter. Um, and um, you go on from there. Um, still not quite 100% um, unmaintainable, but a massive improvement on what we had before. Um, quite a few hours of overtime we've probably rigged up here. And um, boss will never know.